This is Plant-Based Briefing, The Blue Zones, Longevity Secrets from Centenarians, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. And I'm Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles on plant-based, compassionate, eco-friendly living with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. Today's article is longer than that, so it's a three-parter. I'm reading part one today and then followed by parts two and three subsequent days. It's by Ocean Robbins, who co-founded Food Revolution Network with his father, John Robbins. They are some amazing people. John Robbins was groomed to be the heir to the Baskin Robbins empire, which his father founded. He had money, prestige, security, along with an ice cream shaped swimming pool in the backyard. But he walked away from all that for a number of reasons, but mainly because he didn't want to devote his life to selling ice cream after realizing it makes people unhealthy. So he decided to forge a new path, and over the last 30 years, he's written books about healthy eating and healthy living, including the blockbuster bestseller, Diet for a New America. And Ocean Robbins, the son, was born in a log cabin built by his parents and grew up eating food they grew on the land together. At age 16, Ocean co-founded an organization called YES, Youth for Environmental Sanity, that he directed for the next 20 years. It's still running, but he stepped away to found Food Revolution Network with his father, which is a nonprofit dedicated to healthy, ethical, and sustainable food for all. And they offer so many amazing resources. Their blog is wonderful. They have courses and master classes, all kinds of recipes, and they host an annual Food Revolution Summit where they interview 24 of the world's top food experts. These summits are amazing, and you can watch them online. And I really recommend signing up for their email newsletter because you'll get access to all this information and know when it's happening. And this article is about blue zones. And the first time I'd ever even heard the phrase blue zones was about three and a half years ago. Plant-based eating was not even on my radar at that point. But these blue zones and the studies around them are so incredibly important. So I'm excited to get into today's plant-based briefing. The Blue Zones, Longevity Secrets from Centenarians, Part 1 by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. Summary. The cutting edge of medicine is largely focused on longevity through genetic manipulation, nanotechnology, and advances in cellular science. While most of this is still in the realm of science fiction, the good news is that we already know a great deal about how to extend human life and health. There are several societies that produce far more than their expected share of centenarians and other healthy, long-lived people. What can we learn from the Blue Zones, and how can we apply their wisdom to our lives? In 1959, eminent physicist Richard Feynman gave a lecture at Caltech that he titled, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom. The main idea he presented was the potential for manipulating matter on an atomic scale and how that might change science and the world. Feynman imagined a new field, nanotechnology, that could create designer atoms that would do whatever we wanted them to. One use case he envisioned was what he called swallowing the surgeon, the creation of a microscopic surgical robot that could be swallowed, piloted to the site of a health problem, and set to work to correct it. Subsequent advances in nanotechnology have some futurists predicting the end of death sometime in this century. And just in case that doesn't work out, many technologists are cheering efforts to build computers sophisticated enough to accommodate human consciousness. Someday soon, they insist, we'll all just be uploaded to the cloud when our bodies fail and either experience the universe as an immersive simulation or get transferred to some other organic body for the next phase of life. That's all very interesting, and maybe I'd want to live in a world where such things are possible or even commonplace. I'd have to think about it. But for right now, I'm not after literal immortality. I just want a long and healthy life, surrounded by loved ones, doing work that matters to me. Cracking the Longevity Code The good news is that we humans have already cracked that code, many times over. In far-flung parts of the planet, a number of societies have arisen that have created a quality of life conducive to vital and vigorous longevity. My dad, John Robbins, wrote about four such places in his 2007 book, Healthy at 100. And additional research over the intervening 15 years has reinforced what he learned and found more communities where an unusual proportion of citizens are still vibrant and active past their 100th birthdays. 
A National Geographic team, including author Dan Buettner, has studied five of these places, which they dubbed Blue Zones. Not only did they quantify and verify the longevity claims, but they also conducted sophisticated statistical analysis to identify common factors that contributed to those long and healthy lives. In this article, we'll look at the Blue Zones research and highlight things you can do to improve the quality and possibly length of your life. And as some of the factors are social rather than individual, when you make some of these changes, you may also increase the odds of the people around you gaining years in healthy and fulfilling lives as well. The Fight Against Aging Most of us fear getting old and stress out about the prospect. In an industrialized society in which things change incredibly quickly, being old is no longer seen as a qualification for wisdom and value, Instead, the idea that aging renders people irrelevant and out of touch has taken hold. And in a society that sometimes seems to worship youth, many of us bemoan the physical limitations that accompany aging. We peer into a bleak future of deteriorating health, increasing pain, and physical and cognitive limitations. We may anticipate boredom, loneliness, or even neglect by a world infatuated with the new. And despite the fact that all of us, the fortunate ones anyway, will age, there's a strong societal stigma against it. There's a reason so many products are touted as anti-aging. Our society is seriously frightened of aging, so much so that we consider it a disease rather than a normal and natural stage of life, which, like all other stages of life, has its own challenges and difficulties, and also its own gifts and blessings. Your view on aging matters. When you visualize an old person, what words come to mind that describe that person? A rather typical list for someone in our society might include words like senile, slow, sick, grumpy, irritable, stubborn. Words or phrases like that are characteristic of how our society often views the elderly. But it might surprise you to learn that in some cultures it's a very different story. Becky Levy is a professor of epidemiology at Yale School of Public Health and a professor of psychology at Yale University. She writes that when she asked people in China to describe an old person, the most common response was wisdom. In contrast, when she asked people in the U.S. to describe an old person, the first image that came to many was memory loss. It's important to look at our prejudices about aging because the fear of aging can become self-fulfilling. Evidence tells us that simply believing that aging is bad can be damaging to your health, As we age, this bias takes a toll on our self-esteem, our dignity, and also our health. Adding life to your years Up until very recently, modern society has been steadily extending people's lives for over a century. Advanced medical technologies may keep people alive longer today, but they rarely add quality of life to those years. The result is we're living longer with an increased lifespan, But our health span, the number of healthy years we get to experience, is actually decreasing. There's reason to think our current medical paradigm may be reaching the limits of its effectiveness. In the U.S., life expectancy has actually been decreasing over the past several years. This is partly due to COVID-19 and partly due to the opioid crisis, but it's also because those losses haven't been offset by gains brought about by new technologies. While longevity and computer consciousness researchers look to an uncharted future for the cure for aging and even death, I find value in looking at societies where healthy aging is the norm. These are cultures where people fully expect to remain strong and healthy well into their 80s and 90s, and where it's common to find people who are literally healthy at 100, which is why my dad titled his book Healthy at 100. So let's explore them, looking for lessons for our society. Spoiler alert, we're going to see that longevity in these cultures isn't linked to self-denial and abstinence, but rather to pleasure, social connection, meaningful work, and delicious, healthy, life-giving food and drink. What is a Blue Zone? In 2004, Dan Buettner joined a National Geographic expedition to uncover the secrets of human longevity. They wanted to know not just where people lived the longest, but what the healthiest lifestyles were that contributed to their longevity and vitality. The concept of a blue zone, and the name, grew out of demographic work by researchers Gianni Pez and Michel Poulain. They drew blue circles on maps to highlight regions of extreme longevity and referred to the areas inside the circles as blue zones. 
Building on that demographic work, Butner and his team identified five major blue zones. Using epidemiological data, statistics, birth certificates, and other research, the team verified the unusual distribution of ages that showed how common it was to live for 100 years or more. They found that someone living in a blue zone is 10 times more likely to reach 100 than a person living in the United States as a whole. You just listened to The Blue Zones, Longevity Secrets from Centenarians, Part 1, by Ocean Robbins at foodrevolution.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson, and as I mentioned, this one's a three-parter, so tune in tomorrow for the section called Places with the Most Centenarians and Characteristics that Contribute to Longevity, and then the following day, How to Live to 100. And if you're interested in learning more about John and Ocean Robbins, Rip Esselstyn has an amazing podcast called Plant Strong, and he interviewed them each separately. Ocean was interviewed in episode 157, and John was interviewed in episode 140. I highly recommend that podcast. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.